where the Kogi State Governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Musawada, has rejected the election's result as announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. He described the exercise as a declaration of war against democracy. Uh, and he said, INEC declared the incumbent governor, uh, Mr. Yaya Bello, as a winner of the November 16th governorship election, having polled 406,222 votes to defeat his closest rival, Mr. Wada of the PDP, who polled 189,704 votes. The PDP candidate is insisting on approaching the tribunal to challenge the election results. Musawada, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the overwhelming majority of the people of Kogi State, reject the conduct and outcome of the gubernatorial election held on the November 16th in Kogi State. We will never despair, but remain strong in our determination to retrieve the mandate freely given to us by the people in their desire for a change, and we will pursue this cause to its logical conclusion within the confines of the laws of this country. Well, Governor Yaya Bello of the APC has been re-elected as Governor of Kogi State. The Governor who won in 12 local government areas out of the 21 in the state scored 406,222 to defeat his closest opponent, Mr. Musawada of the PDP, who scored 189,704 votes. In Bayosa State, the Lion won in six of the state's eight local government areas, defeating his closest rival, Senator Doyo Diri of the PDP. Mr. Lyon's victory marks the first time the PDP would lose a governorship election in the state since the nation's return to democracy in 1999. In a moment, we'll give you a breakdown of those results for you to be able to make sense of it. But we'll be breaking them down for you to understand what has happened and what did not happen. Let's discuss these issues, everyone. I have joining me from our Abuja studio, my panel, begin with Mrs. Uh, Bolanle Sarumi Aliyu, a former NIP governorship candidate in New York State in 2019. And Honorable Klatus Orbun is an APC chieftain and a former lawmaker. Professor Ibrahim Jibrin is a professor of political science. Thank you, gentlemen and lady, for coming on tonight on the program. Let me begin with the lady in the mix, uh, Mrs. Sarumi. Uh, tell us what to make of the conduct, security, and the outcome of the Kogi and Bias elections. What are your thoughts? Um, the Kogi elections, I would say, finally, you know, as broken the hearts of many Nigerians, many regular people, mothers especially. Uh, we had a few people that died on that day, and why must we continue this way? The solution is simple. The bill, the amended Electoral Act bill, is with Mr. President, is on his table. We need him to sign this to ensure that when people vote, it can be transmitted. We don't need to have people stealing ballot boxes anymore. We don't need people to be writing results. Imagine in Okene local government, uh, the APC have over 100 and something thousand votes, whereas you could see the real votes with the other parties there. And I must commend Natasha. Well done. Well done. You've made us proud. Well, what would you be requir uh, requiring as a change, or what would you say is your major grievance about this election in terms of the conduct? You're not, you participated in the governorship election in 20, uh, earlier this year in February, but if you look at that election and the one that was conducted last Saturday, what would you say is a major departure? Is there any? Definitely. Or your state was a peaceful election to an extent. Maybe you had the odd, odd, odd one local government or two where they had, a, 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 you know, tried to have a bit of violence. However, Kogi State is a disappointment. With over 30-something thousand policemen deployed to one state to ensure, is it, you know, to ensure the lives of people were saved. But I didn't see that in the videos. We saw people scared. There was a low turnout. You know, many people did not go out to vote because these forces you pushed into Kogi actually intimidated the people of Kogi State. My sons are from Kogi State. I have interest in Kogi State, and I want that state to work for those children. 
So you are not happy with the outcome. Uh, the, the, the governor has been re-elected. So you are not happy with that. Definitely. The real votes that I saw <laughs> came from my party, which is PDP now, and SDP. Natasha could not buy any votes. Natasha did not uh, carry any togs to vote for her. So the real voice of the people, that's what we got with the turnout, I mean, with the votes we got from her. Let me go to Honorable to get our acts together. The people are suffering, the people are dying. The amount of money spent on, uh, on the electoral process is enough to ensure that Kogi State is a better state. Let me go to Honorable Kletus Auburn on this one. Your party, Honorable Auburn, had won in these two states, in Kogi and Bayelsa State. And you're hearing, the, uh, even before the results were announced, people are already saying, this election does not meet standard. People are already criticizing the process. People are talking about brigandage. They're talking about issues of security. Does this concern you? Does it give you uh, concerns, rather? Yes, let me, let me give you first a panoramic view of my uh, take on the two states. Predictably, Bayelsa State was the resurrection of a reformed traditional cultural voting pattern in which uh, w what we term as godfathers. Godfatherism is not a term to use for what is happening. It is just a communal voting pattern in which there is a leadership that people believe in and their body language and whatever they do becomes what the people take there must be responsibility in leadership. That is what happened in Bayelsa State. So it was expected, it was predictable, it was predicted. But for Kogi State, I am an APC member. Uh, in terms of security, what we got with 38,000 policemen, ask yourself how many of those policemen were as armed as the talks that came after them. I have conducted elections as a state chairman. I have been a candidate. So I know what it means and what happens on election days. Therefore, I do think that what we should be moving away from is the primitivity of having people stand on the queues and become sitting targets for political talks, such that to prepare for an election, rather than canvassing for votes, you'll be looking for how many AK-47s and how many grenades you can provide and procure, and then train those who can use it. The INEC national chairman, long before the elections, told Nigerians that there was stockpiling of arms in the two states and that the two other parties were preparing for war and not for election. The INEC sounded that warning. That may have encouraged the police to deploy the number of policemen they did. But I ask you, how armed were the policemen? How trained uh, were they? Honorable Auburn, apologies if I'm reporting. Sorry, Honorable Auburn, if you look at your party has benefited in this election uh, for both this states. Election. So if you talk uh, about political state. thugs, uh, where do you think these are coming from? Since your party is the one who benefited. Each time you get the benefits, you accuse the winner. And I'm insisting that we should be dealing with a Nigerian situation rather than an APC PDP situation. Each time we reduce it to APC PDP goddess benefit, I ask you, only yesterday, the spokesperson of the Nigerian Senate an APC member lost his seat to the courts. Nobody talked about democracy being in danger and the judiciary being perverted. But today, we are going into an election in which APC takes two states and it has become news. But when we lost Adama Oud, sitting governor, and Bauchi with sitting governor, nobody mm -hmm. talked about the threat of democracy and violence. When all this happens, I put it down to the Nigerian political elite who must have to come to terms with the fact that the election is a game and not a war. All Until right. We come let me, to that, uh, at that moment, let, let, let me go to shooting. Professor Gibran on this one. Uh, pro Professor is a scientist and he studied uh, the, the, uh, the principles uh, and the intrigues of politics. Professor, what happened in, Co look, uh, in Kogi State and Bayelsa State? Is it uh, strange to what you know in politics of a global standard. I think what happened was uh, extremely strange. And it is disturbing that uh, what happened was announced long before it happened. Like the previous speaker said, even INEC was aware of arms um, stockpiling. And precisely because of that, over 70,000 extra police were sent to the two states. I was in Kogi State, 
and we uh, traveled around the state during the elections, and almost nowhere did we find police checkpoints. The people moving on the streets in pickup vehicles were thugs armed with AK-47. Nobody stopped them. And this suggests that it wasn't just something that happened like that. There must be official collusion for the police to withdraw from checkpoints all over the states and for people with openly holding arms to be traveling systematically going to places where they know the opposition has massive support, and even they are choosing the uh, polling units with the most voters, uh, shooting guns, and cutting away the voting material. Prof, this let me, me apologies. Uh, let, let, let's, let, apologies to Bolton, Prof. We need to take a break. But when we come back from the break, there is a disturbing report from civil society organizations, those of them who get alternate uh, results or who monitor results. They're saying the result in Bayelsa State is a departure from original result. What does that mean? We'll find out when we come back from this break, everyone. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us on the program. So let's tell you that uh, a civil society organization that is involved in uh, looking at the result and monitoring the results at elections, what they usually do is that they usually follow the result, get the result as it's been collected at a polling unit, and they will put it together independently of what the umpire gets. And oftentimes in the last election, they get, say, 90-something percent. Uh, that means usually sometimes the result is often close uh, to the original result announced by the umpire. But this time around, something has happened. And take a listen to what happened. The Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement, Yaga Africa, are calling on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to conduct elections in the remaining polling units in Bayelsa State where elections did not hold at all. Addressing the conference in Abuja, the coach uh, uh, says that the declaration of Mr. David Lyon as a winner of Bayelsa governorship election is not a true reflection of the exercise as election did not hold in 24% of the polling units in the state. The group claims the election is far from being free, fair, and credible due to, according to them, massive irregularities. What does this mean? They say it's a far cry from the original result. Let me get back to my panel uh, in our Puja studio. Professor Ibrahim Jibrin is a, poli uh, a political science professor and also a consultant to some of these groups on these issues and is familiar with some of these things. Uh, Mrs. Bolan Lisa Rumiya Liu is a former governorship candidate in Oyo State in the 2019 governorship election there. And Honorable Cletus Urban is a chieftain of the APC and a former lawmaker. Professor, let me come to you. What does this mean when Yaga, in their PVT, in their tabulation of results, say that the result as released by INEC is far cry from the original result? I mean, what it means is quite simple. The parallel tabulation means that results are made public at the polling unit. And what they do is that they have observers who collect those results and they compute them uh, themselves and compare the results they have with the results that INEC releases. If there is a significant variation of the results, it means uh, one of them is uh, wrong. And what they are saying is there is significant variation in terms of the BIOSA results. But in addition to the significant variation, they had also observed of almost a quarter of the polling units, there was no elections at all. And if you don't have elections in nearly a quarter of the polling units, it means uh, the voters have not all fully had an opportunity to choose who their leaders would be. And there's therefore a problem about that election being but, free, but, but, fair, Prof, uh, and sorry, credible. apologies, Prof. Let me quickly get your view on this. So when they are saying this, what can INEC do within the frame of the law? The election result has been announced, and the announcement is part of law, is somewhat a law also. Can INEC do anything in this premise? 
I don't think INEC can do much because the Electoral Act is clear that if there's a problem with an election, the presiding officer of the polling unit will make that determination. But once these results have been compiled and the returning officer has announced the report, the result, then it means it's really only the courts that can intervene to review the situation and give a determination of what they believe is the correct uh, outcome. But I think the call for the cancellation of the entire results is much more the result of our understanding that we are in very dangerous times in this country. We are returning to the days in which election, election results are totally f fraudulent because a number of things happened. First of all, they target specifically the opposition strongholds where they have a lot of support and voters, and they send armed thugs to scatter them and steal the material. Now, having stolen the material, somehow these materials turn up at the collation center. And this is why we believe that there must be official collusion All for right. that sort of thing to... Prof, uh, because of our time, yeah, let happen. me quickly get the views of uh, the final thoughts of some of our other guests there with you. Uh, Mrs. Bolalis Sarumi, you are uh, of the opinion that something needs to be done. And to fix this going forward, what would, that, what would the solution be for you? Like I said earlier, we need the president to ensure that the, electoral, the amended Electoral Act is passed into law, to ensure that the votes get transmitted, and eventually we'll go into electronic voting, which will take a while, obviously. Uh, we are not going to give up as women. We're going to continue with this battle to ensure that we have more women representing us in Nigeria. And I'm sure when women get there, there will be less violence. There might not even be any violence. You can see what's happening is between these men uh, from two major parties fighting each other, all for, you know, all to be a governor, do or die affair. We're not going to do that. We're not going to buy any votes. We're going to kill money politics in Nigeria with the movement we're growing right now. We're going to have our first ever female president in 2023 with 36 million votes. Watch this space. Wow. We're working on uh, it. That, 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 All women out there and the one. youth, uh, you and must support this. All right, that's an issue. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we're now. looking forward to that. Uh, well, America also was struggling to get that uh, in the case of Hillary Clinton. We'll see how that pans out in 2023. Let's get a final view uh, on the program tonight. And that's going to be from Honorable Cletus Auburn. Honorable Cletus Auburn, give us your final view, and that will lead us into the end of the program. We have just about 30 seconds to go. Your party is a benefit, and a lot of accusing fingers are being raised. This time around, what would you say is a solution to the problem? In 30 seconds. Straight away, we have lost an opportunity to make performance a basis for attainment of political success or for attainment of political office. But the solution, quickly to put it, what we have in Kogi State, Bayasa State is simply irredeemable for PDP. They should accept that. They worked to fail, and they failed very roundly. In Kogi State, what we are seeing here is clearly a canonization of Judas. We are getting into a beatification of the devil because what we had there, I speak now as a Nigerian, not as APC. We, the results there may have come in favor of APC, but I'm very sure that if you ask real APC people, they will also tell you that we got it by default. And we are still happy with that because it also gives us an inroad. But right. for another day, I want to tell you that for Nigerians to get out of this, we will need to have to get ourselves voting the same way we use our ATM cards. We, All right. we, we need to go homes, now. Uh, we're out of time, obviously. Uh, but I must sincerely thank uh, my panel tonight. Honorable Cletus Obun, a member of the APC and a uh, former lawmaker. Mrs. Bolan Lisa Rumi Aliyu, uh, the governorship candidate of NIP in the 2019 governorship election in your State, and Professor Ibrahim Jibrain, a professor of political science. Thank you so much, gentlemen and ladies. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shimon Kimale. Bye for now. <laughs>